a story? Sure, Nicholas, I'll be glad to tell you a story. In fact, this is a time of the year to tell the story about Jesus and when he was born and how he was born and where he came to. I'll tell you that story, but just before we do, I think uh, I think we ought to hear something about it. Is that okay? All right.
And the second, the angel said to her, don't be afraid. God is very happy with you, and he has a special message for you. Mary was afraid. She was so afraid, but she didn't run away. You're going to have a baby, the angel told her. You must name him Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called God's son. Wow. She was going to be the mother of the most important baby who ever came to earth. When Joseph heard about the baby, he didn't understand. God loved Joseph, and he wanted him to know what was going to happen. So God sent another angel. The angel said, Joseph, name the baby Jesus. Jesus means Savior, and Jesus will save his people from sin. When Joseph heard about God's plan, he got excited too. One day, the king of their land made a new rule. He said all the people had to go to their family's hometown to be counted. Mary's and Joseph's hometown was far away, and it was almost time for the baby to be born. But off they went, riding on a donkey, clippity-clop, clippity-clop to Bethlehem town. When they got there, the little town was full of people. Mary was so tired, but where could she sleep? Joseph looked for a place to stay, and he finally found a room for them in a barn. Mary was so tired, she lay right down on the hay. And that's where God's baby son was born. On the hay, in a barn, and at first no one paid any attention at all.
hillside near Bethlehem when Jesus was born, shepherds were taking care of their sheep. Suddenly the sky became so bright with light it hurt their eyes. They were frightened nearly to death. Don't be afraid, someone inside that light said. It was an angel with a new message. I have good news for you. A tiny baby was born in Bethlehem town tonight. You will find him sleeping in the hay. And then the whole sky filled up with so many angels, no one could count them.
the shepherds hurried to Bethlehem town as fast as they could run, and they found the baby in a barn sleeping in the hay. The shepherds gave thanks to God. Then they tiptoed outside the barn, and as soon as they were outside, they started talking to everyone they met to tell them about the baby Jesus. King Herod was just about the meanest man in the world. When he heard about baby Jesus, he didn't like it one bit. He didn't want the baby to grow up and become king and take away his throne. King Herod wanted to hurt the baby, but God was not going to let anybody hurt baby Jesus. God sent another angel to warn Mo Joseph, and he said, Take the baby and Mary and go far away to Egypt. The angel said, Stay there until I tell you it's safe to come home. So Joseph got right up out of bed and took Mary and baby Jesus to Egypt. After a long time, God sent one last angel to Joseph in a dream and said, Get up and take the child and his mother and go home. That awful old king was gone and could never hurt them again. Mary and Joseph and little Jesus laughed and sang as they went home to their own land. God and his angels had kept them safe. Today we don't see angels very often, but they're all around us. They watch over us and care for us when we sleep, when we play, when we're happy, and even when we're sad. We don't get to see Jesus either, but he is right next to us all the time. He's always taking care of us because he loves us the best of all. As we come into this Christmas season and we're enjoying the wonderful atmosphere, the love and the joy that we all are experiencing or hopefully all of us are, I'm reminded of a story of something that took place back in 1994. If you remember, the wall came down around East Berlin in 89, and then in 1991, after 70 years of atheism, official atheism in the Soviet Union, the Soviet Union broke apart and doors were open for many people to go into the country. My wife, Rowan, and I were there in December of 90, just before the wall, before the, the Soviet Union broke apart. We were there on the inside of it and watched it crumble from within when it was breaking apart. And this story comes just a few years later when the country was open for missionaries and two American missionaries went to Russia and they were invited to come to go to a, 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 an orphanage with, where they had a hundred children. These children, boys and girls, have been abandoned and abused and left in the care of a government-run program, and uh, they, they didn't even know the story of Jesus. So when the missionaries, these two missionaries, went there, they decided that was the best story to tell them since it was coming up on Christmas time. And they told them the story that we just heard of Mary and Joseph going to Bethlehem and finding no room in the inn 
or the motel and, and how they had to go to a barn and baby Jesus was born and they told them that story that there was no place for Jesus until they found a barn for him to be born in. And then the kids listened thinking that also applied to them. Well, after they got finished telling the story, they gave the children some small pieces of cardboard that they could use to do a little craft work, and they made a crude manger out of the cardboard. And each child was given a small paper square cut from yellow napkins that, that had, they'd brought with them. There was no colored paper available in the city, so they brought their own, the two missionaries did, and after they gave the children instructions, the children tore the paper carefully and made little strips of paper to lay in, the, in their cardboard manger to look like their hay. And they had a little uh, blanket that they'd cut up into pieces for them to put around the baby and they formed the baby out of some tanned felt that they had brought with them and they cut them into little doll-like babies. And then the orphans were busy assembling these into their own little manger. All went well. And one of the missionaries was going from the table, from the place to place to see what the different children were doing, how they were arranging their, their manger and, and the baby. And one of them came up to where little Misha, six-year-old Misha, had just completed his manger and had the little strips of paper for the hay and the baby in the manger. But when she got there, she was startled to see there were two babies in the manger. She said, this child didn't understand the story. There's only supposed to be one baby in the manger. So she called for the interpreter and she said, Misha, tell me the story and explain the babies that are in the manger. Misha told the story perfectly. He told about Jesus not having a place to live and he told about how he was born in the barn and laid in the manger. And then he started making up his own ending to the story. And he said, when Mary laid the baby in the manger, Jesus looked at me and he asked me if I had a place to stay. And I told him, I have no mama and I have no papa, so I don't have any place to stay. Then Jesus told me I could stay with him. But I, I said I couldn't because I didn't have a gift to give him like everybody else did. <coughs> But I wanted to stay with Jesus so much, so I thought about what I had that maybe I could use for a gift. So I asked Jesus, if I get in the manger with you to help keep you warm, will that be a good enough gift? And Jesus told me, if you keep me warm, that will be the best gift anyone ever gave me. So I got in the manger, and that other baby in there is me. And when I got there, Jesus looked at me and he told me I could stay with him for always. As little Misha finished his story, his eyes brim full of tears that splashed down his little cheeks. Putting his hand over his face, his head dropped to the table and his shoulders shook as he sobbed and sobbed. The little orphan had found someone who would never abandon him nor abuse him someone who would stay with him for always. I think that Alicia got the story of Christmas. It's the story of Jesus inviting every one of us to come to him because he said, come to me all you who labor and are heavy laden, I'll give you rest. He said, I didn't come to call the righteous, I came to call sinners to repentance. And Jesus Christ is still inviting us to come. He's not in the manger anymore, but he's always available to us if we'll just call on him and ask him to come into our hearts and into our lives and put our faith and trust in him. As some of you have already testified today, Jesus Christ has made a difference in your physical need as well as your lives. And if there's anyone here this morning, you haven't made that choice to put your faith and trust in him. As we sing this next song, it's a good time to just reach out in a silent prayer and say, Jesus, I need someone to stay with. I want you to be my Savior. I want you to be my Lord. I want you to be my friend. 
And if you invite him, he'll come in. He said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I'll come in. He's ready if you are. Let's sing this next song together. Jesus. Amen. 